No, this one was easy. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Ah, uh, sweet. All right, how you doing, man? So after I've been hearing your voice on this game, I would say for a good whew, 13 odd hours. Yeah. Now your accent now is throwing me completely off. <laughs> Well, it's the same as your accent. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's spot on the same. And that's what threw me off when I talked to Marty. And he goes, you know he's, you know he's from Victoria, right? I said, what? What do you mean? He goes, yeah, because he was talking about LA and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, uh, oh, yeah, right. oh, he's American. <laughs> right. And he's like, no, no he's Australian. Said, no, he's not. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining me, man. I really appreciate it. No worries, man. No, I was, I was uh, glad to be able to help you out. It's, yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching you play, actually. Today. I've actually, yeah, well, I've, I've finished all the game. I'm actually playing replaying the last mission now. So, oh, last mission. Damn. So, so the actual, um, the game, I absolutely loved. Um, I, I played the original back 18 years ago. Uh, I fell in love with it then. I fall in love with it now. And... I still do Unable to love the fact that, um, that day, it's a very linear it game. It must do you know what I mean? A it's a set story. It's not like you have to go off and do other missions like Grand Theft Auto or anything Thank like that. It's got like a, this is the story and I'm going to take you on the journey. And I think I like that. Yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, man, I'm so happy. Yeah, so happy with the way it's turned out. It's been great. Oh, um, it's great to be part and, of that. And just family. to see, yeah, exactly. And just to see what the they did with, um, the especially the last scene. Spoiler alert for anyone. Uh, we can spoil alert. Yeah. That's fine. It's it's perfectly yeah, fine. I we, figure we, it blew my mind, even though I knew it. Something about the way, because of the the high detail, the graphics, and everything. It really rang a bell with me, and I and I really really enjoyed it. I was just left just going, oh oh no, oh oh no no, oh my god, hey wait, that's the guy. And I had to tell my stream, I don't know if you know these guys, but that's the guy, that's the protagonist in number two. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like that's what's so clever about the, the whole franchise of Mafia is that oh. they're all connected. So it's not just like three separate games, and they go through. Oh, the history it's bloody it's so awesome i love it it's absolutely yeah. beautiful so when you originally really went for this role was it do were you living in australia at the time or la at the time uh i was living in la i've actually been living in la for the last eight years i only came back because of covid so yeah oh same same as marty yeah yeah exactly yeah 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 so a lot of, I mean, man, all my, all my Aussie friends that were living in LA since I've been living there, they've pretty much all of them have moved back to Australia now. I've got one, one left that hasn't moved. Oh, is it one? Yeah, oh, two. I got two left that haven't moved. One's this in Canada and one's in, in LA. What happened to your um, door? Chris only yeah, knows. It's um, it's sort of a mass exodus at the moment. So. Yeah, it's hundred percent. Mm. So when you, so when you went for this role, I mean, how? Did you throw this accent in straight off the bat? Yeah, I mean, look, um, I didn't, I wasn't fully aware that it was supposed to be kind of East Coast. I, I mean, I, I wasn't like, well, for example, I, I thought I was just auditioning for a film, like a feature film, because that's oh. what the, like, the, that's what the breakdown for the audition said, feature film. So I was like, oh, cool, it's a lead role in a feature film. Cool, that'd be great. And then, um, and then I got to the, the audition. Well, the first audition I did, I just sent in a self tape. So I wasn't able to make it to the physical audition. So I just taped myself doing the audition and then sent it off. And oh, uh, my right. manager was, and it's really funny because my manager was like, oh, I really strongly advise against this. If, if they find it in the room, they're not even going to watch your tape, blah, blah, blah. And I went, can, can we just do it? Cause I don't have an alternative. It's, it's either a tape or nothing at all. So I figured let's, let's go for it. I didn't even have time to learn the lines. For the audition, for the first so audition. you just wing it. So what I yeah, so what I did was I just got myself really, really familiar with the lines in the in the small amount of time that I had, and then I I, I wrote it down in different sections. So hey, every what? time there was like a thought change, because it was that that famous monologue where he's like, um, oh, I can't, oh man, I feel really bad. I can't remember it now. No, but, no, that's um, all right. But basically, um, every time there was a thought change, I'd write it down on a separate piece of paper and I'd put the pa the pieces of paper all around the camera so that every time 
I couldn't think of the words. I'd just read it on the paper. <laughs> and, then I'd, and then I'd say it as if I wasn't panicking, as if it was just a thought that was coming to me. And yeah, you were like, back. hey, uh, you look at the paper. Oh, yeah, 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 this, this. Uh, yeah, so a bit, a bit like what I heard Brando did in um, Godfather, apparently. He, he didn't learn his lines. He just kind of read them off character. Off, right, uh, so you're going Marlon Brando method. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, shit, if it, if it works with Marlon. <laughs> so, um, but anyway. So when so, you um, obviously got the nod for this, then, yeah. I mean, mocap suits. Are they as uncomfortable yeah. as they look? Yeah, well, yeah, they are. They are. It's um, it's funny, you know, because I um, part of my acting training, um, I did three years over in Perth. You, you might, I don't know if you've heard of Whopper, but um, it's kind of like yeah, I know Whopper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's like another version of NIDA. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you got NIDA on the east coast and Whoppers on the west coast. Yeah. So um, so I grew up in Ballarat, auditioned for Whopper. I got in, flew over, and lived in Perth for three years to do that course. And part of that course was actually some dance training. So we had to we had to wear like really tight clothing for all the dancing stuff. Yeah. And so like you know jazz and all that kind of stuff. And um, and so I was kind of used to feeling that uncomfortable. But yeah, when they put us back in the mocap suits, it just felt like I was back in a dance class at Wapa. <laughs> yeah, just just going. Well, I guess it's paying off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It's pretty tight. I gotta tell you, it's a pretty tight fit. And it looks like you were with a really great bunch of actors as well. Well, see, that's the thing. There were so many Italians Ollie. that um, that the suit got tighter and tighter as, as we went on shooting because we were all just eating three course oh, meals three times a day because we're eating like Italians. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hey, I got pasta on my shoes, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This got this got belly. me. <laughs> this exact scene is one that got me. Is especially when I I felt like. Paulie was gonna die. Oh, is wait, because when on. he's on the train and he's just saying oh, about he Paulie. just wants that one score and he's out. He just wants to go away, oh, get away I from know. all and I just said, dude, he's dead. Like if you look at it in movies and games, everyone says, Hey, I just wanna get away and I wanna have a great life somewhere and there's a you go, you're dead. Yeah, I know. It's um it was a really tough action. It was, it was a tough thing to do this one because you constantly kind of wanting to be with Paulie, but you realize that there could be some bad guy in the room, so you've got to scour the room first, and then you're also trying to find the money, and so there's just so many things going on. Yeah. You're sort of, you've got to be, you know, you've got to be on your guard, and you've got to be searching, and you've got to be mourning all at the same time, and then the phone rings, and you're like, wait, is there a bomb? If I answer this phone, is this going to explode? Yeah. Like, is yeah. there somebody out the window? It's yeah, dumb. exactly. Where's Paulie? Because they're really, they're really tricky. They're good at what they do. But yeah, well, that, that's great dead. writing, isn't it? When they've got I'm layers and layers and over in layers. Hallway, torn a fucking skull. Oh, God. But even hearing this accent and hearing it's yours, it's so left of centre from you. Jesus Christ. I mean, he's, he's in the... He's, 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 he's got torn a head in the hallway. Yeah, you got like this uh, uh, grainy voice. You know, ah, I've had too many cigarettes. You know? Yeah, like, I'm looking at him now. He's lying in the hallway. Doing a fucking head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but doing the fucking head, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that was actually a very big thing of the whole story. It's like, did you put two in the head? Well, that's your yeah. mistake. Right? There's a life there. That's how professionals do it, man. If you don't put two in the head, you can't be sure. And we learned that lesson in that. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Probably didn't shoot him twice in the head, so. And he came back. I see so. But it's, um, it's, it's hey, great I'm, to see I'm this game come back. Sorry? I'm looking at your I'm looking at your stream right now. Yeah. But I'm trying to work out is there a way I can mute it but still listen to you? I'm trying to work out. I, I went oh, into so, settings so, and it didn't work. Oh no, for the stream, uh you will see we should yeah. go over the actual video itself, there's a little mute button. You see a volume? Bali. Okay. Are you on your phone or, or on your Oh yeah, I'm on my phone. Let me get on my I might get on my laptop actually, it might be easier. But the way they immerse you in this, in the, I think it comes right down to the soundtrack as well. They, they set it off perfectly at the start. You, you're already invested by going, wow, this reminds me of Godfather. Yeah, I know, right? That's what I, I mean, that's another great thing. It was inspired by so many great movies and stuff. It's, it's pretty awesome. Loving it. Um, and that's, and especially some of the other guys, like the guy who plays Paulie, Jeremy Luke. Mm. Um, he is obsessed with all that stuff. He actually even put together his own um, TV show because he wanted to get in a Scorsese film. 
So he thought, what, what? better, what better way to do? Yeah. So he designed. He basically wrote a TV show around two actors who were trying their whole time in Hollywood to get on a Scorsese show, on a Scorsese movie, and so they made a TV show out of it. It was picked up. Um, it's on Amazon Prime, I think, uh, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that? Amazon. You can watch it on their on their TV on the, stream it on uh, Amazon. But um, and uh, yeah, it's it's called uh, Small Shots. You know, big shots, small shots. So it's called small shots. Out. Yeah, and the, 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 the best part of the story is that Scorsese got wind of this, watched the show, and put him, as a result, put him in um, The Irishman on Netflix. Oh, wow. Yeah. Isn't, isn't so it funny actually, when you see him in there, you can see him in a role and you go, wow, that's for future roles right there, you know? Yeah, well, he wrote his, he wrote his own destiny, literally. Like, he just, I mean, he wrote himself into a Scorsese film and then Scorsese saw it and went yeah I'll take you <laughs> well see now now for you of course like the only unfortunate thing is is that obviously we, we've talked about we've watched the end of it and stuff like that and spoiler alert you know yeah, Tommy's Tommy's demise you know what I mean but um yeah it's just a, I mean I still think they have an actual chance to delve more into Tommy's story because he he has yeah. got a, he has got a bit where he jumps straight to when he gets older I know, yeah, there's, there's a lot in the middle there, but I think they just wanted to sort of, you know, get to the point, I guess. Which yeah, is a pity, to because, the next um, and, yeah. I've, yeah, and I've read, I've read some reviews that have said that they wish that um, it was more, because it's very true to the original, you know, it's it's more of a, an expansion of, of, um, of character development mm-hmm. and script, and sort of uh, fleshed out the plot line a little bit more, but as far as like uh, missions for people to play, it hasn't really expanded on that, unfortunately. No, they haven't. And that's what I was talking about before. It's very mm. linear when it comes to things like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, they, did, hey, they did mention, I don't know if um, there, there might be some options maybe in the future where there might be some, um, hey, Tom. you know, DLCs, but who knows? Yeah. That'd yeah. be nice because oh, I'd, it, I'd love to great. get back in the suit and, what the hell's and going revisit on? that character. That'd be awesome. 100%. And obviously, a lot of stuff have to go on hold. Put me in a bad um, spot. The pandemic that we're know, sitting Sam, at the moment. I'm um, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm sure exactly. something in the works. If, it, if it's as not? popular as what it is right now, and they get a DLC, and you're going, you know, I, I get it. For 100%, I get it. Because they've already got a um, an online this play mode, so you can just go around and do whatever you want. But they could just add to that and give you little side missions, what give you little things to do, and you know. Yeah, yeah. Because I think what this takes, I think this takes the average player. You killed Paul. Something I'm sure you probably did it. In, no. What did you do it in? Six. <laughs> well, uh, you seem I real did it in like it. ten hours, I think. I'm just in a good mood. Yeah. Yeah. I think the but average player takes. Things about are right 13, between 13 me and the dime. I think they average it out. That's, that was up. what they were expecting. Uh, people and to I just take found this to, big uh, bag this of money. Game. Whereas yeah. I think that um, games like this, where it's sort of, a, if it's more of an open, Don knows about Frank Tom. Open the universe. It's they can go for what seventy hours or something crazy. Like they just go on and on and on. That whore. Hundred percent. The girl you were sweet on. But they've um. You're the one that let her live. But you've done an actually fantastic job. Even in even in this, I'm so immersed in the character and stuff like that. Sorry I think you brought a really good dimension to him as well. But our um, business, thanks, which would have been <clears throat> would have been hard because of there's there's fans of Mafia Shame, for so many years. Even I played it, and when I was playing Don this, I'm like, oh my god, I remember this part. Oh, I remember that part. Um, <laughs> and then, but but. But you brought it to a to a level that was. I mean, you've seen what the original funeral. looked like, yeah. You think you're doing? Well, you know what? It was really real. interesting. Um, when we not. were on our first you're day as the entire cast, so so um, maybe uh, Glenn, who plays Don Celieri, he you would have lived he and a lot I had some work. If you would have just looked uh, over your shoulder sure. from time to time, maybe a week first before everyone else kind of came into the room together, yep. um, and it was it was actually about about a month or two before we met everybody. Um, so we did a little bit of work and it was actually that scene boys. where we go to the restaurant and there's a big shootout and, then, my butt. and yeah. um, Tommy has to go around the back and then come around the front and flank them while, while Salieri sort of fends for himself from behind the bar with the, with the shotgun. Yeah, and so, um, so yeah, it was interesting when, we, when all of us got together, Hayden, um, who, who was obviously the main guy, the writer, he... Um, he told us not to watch the original because he didn't want us to actually uh, sort of steal anything or to try and imitate them or anything. Yeah, he wanted, exactly, he wanted yeah. us to, like, he, he really wanted to make the movie ground up and keep it new. Uh, 
um, but still obviously um, be loyal to the original story and all that. But um, he just wanted an alternative option for fans. It's, it's, yeah, skills. because you can tend yeah. to want to imitate it and go, oh, I know what people liked about this, and I'll do my own spin. And then really, you've got to, yeah. it's got to be your story, essentially. Yeah, it can, it can be, it, yeah, that can be dangerous. So, and I mean, it's, it's the same thing, like, you think of some of the best roles you've ever seen, like Scarface with El Pacino. I mean, imagine if Johnny Depp did that, it'd be a completely different take on the character. Oh, 100, still, 100%. But, it'd I mean, probably be directed yeah. by Tim Burton as well. Yeah! <laughs> you guys couldn't imagine a Tim Burton Scarface, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, wait, but the first one's in red. <laughs> yeah. Why has the guy got scissors for hands? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100%. How's he going to go to the toilet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we cut his dick off. Well, oh, no. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, it's the, um, it's good that you didn't see it, but you have seen it since, though. Like, uh, actually, I've, I've still only seen bits and pieces of it. I haven't seen the whole thing. So, uh, the the best to actually see is probably going to be uh, the start. Just That's your favourite part? Just the start when you're listening to the music. If you see the original, you go, oh yeah, yeah, I can see that. And then, then you see what they've done with the new one. You're like, oh my god, it looks a hell of a lot better. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I've seen I've seen the comparison side by side. It's pretty phenomenal. The difference, and it'd be so funny if they did this again in another 18 years. <laughs> it's oh, like, oh, it might as well just be real people. <laughs> real people, real shooting. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, but um, I, I, I love it. I do hope they do do this with a lot of games. They just give it a nice, fresh update. I know a lot of people look at it and go, oh yeah, but it's the same story. They did this 18 years ago. Why are you doing it again?" But there's a very big push on remastering games at the moment. Um, and it's all because of the the people who are aging, you know what I mean? They're going, oh, I want to replay that game again, but, oh, it doesn't work on this console, and it, it um, you know, doesn't look as good as I remember it, and all that stuff. We'll see. That was one of the, que one of the first questions that came up when uh, we were brought into the room together as a cast, and, um, and they were like, oh, yeah, so we've been able to um, scale up, you know, um, Thank you, Mon Bon and 3 for the new consoles, but we really need to, re and we were like, oh, why, why are you remaking them, but you're remaking this, I don't know, so. and they're like, well, it's so old, yeah. like, it's so long ago, they just couldn't do that, they just kind of like, HD and all that kind of stuff, so, yeah. Um, so, um, so we when you lucky. said you were going for a yeah. movie, what kind of movie did you, did you think was a straight-up gangster movie? Or just uh, a movie? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't even have, that's the thing, it's, secretive that I didn't even have the script and it's one of the hardest things with this with this whole process is that they're so secretive and I've actually worked uh, doing pit crews for Formula One for Ferrari before oh, back wow. in the day, way back in the day <laughs> before I sort of started acting probably but um and uh, they're super sensitive. Like they, there's certain parts of the pits you can't take people on when you tour the pit because uh, they don't want people to know what uh, temperature they're keeping the tires at for the cars and all that sort of thing. Yeah, and this so was exactly like that. Like they would only release scripts like a chunk at a time. So I never got the full script. I never knew how the whole thing fit together from start to finish until we'd actually finished. And, and then, and that's and really, then they, you piece it all together. Yeah, exactly, and and that's really um, difficult, especially for actors, because we tend to take um, our direction of, of each scene according to where which scene we've just come from and which scene we're about to go to, and also to sort of see where the character ends up, to see how they, how they grow through the storyline, right? So where they start, where they finish. Like with Tommy, he starts as, as a, a cabbie, he's just a simple guy, and then he becomes a badass, and then he has a family, and he's suddenly like, I can't do this life anymore. Um, Get over here that, now! And so, but, but, and I sort of roughly knew that that's kind of where it came from, where it went. But, um, but I just, I didn't have the full script, and that was kind of a luxury I would have liked to have had. But it made, it made things a bit tougher. But, but obviously, but that's, yeah, like, obviously, that comes down to the, you know, the director or producer or get that game developers that they, they really knew what they wanted, you know. Well, exactly. Yeah, for sure. And also. Uh, but just on that again, um, I don't want to harp on it too much, too much but just uh, the scene where I get uh, beaten up at the start, like, like are we going to teach this cat? Oh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And, then I, and then I run to Sally Aries and go, help! <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, I just thought, I sort of thought that bit went, how convenient. 
Like he just yeah. he just happened to run down that right street. Exactly, and then Tommy gets the hell beaten out of him, and then the next time you see him in the scene with Salieri, he's like, "What's your name, son?" And he looks perfect. It's like nobody even pushed the hair on his head. And yeah, well, there's a lot of there's a lot of gel in there, I think maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah, no, it's it's just that whole thing, and you know, if I had. We actually shot the Salieri scene before we shot the uh, beat up and run scene. So right. if I if I'd had a chance to do if I well, had a chance to know what had happened before the Salieri scene, then when I came into the Salieri scene, I would have played more. Uh, I'm pretty damn sore because I just got. A, I think I, they just broke one of my ribs and they probably broke my nose. <laughs> and, yeah. And my jaw's feeling a little. So bit, so know, like just like guy. scene where you kind of like breathe in a bit heavy. And go, oh jeez. And like like have a bit of a stammer or something you know <laughs> yeah just like okay my rib's still broken but it's yeah, yeah. i'll be good yeah but i'm also very pissed off because these guys killed my only income that's my cat so i want to get back at them can i have your permission please <laughs> yeah yeah i i really want to like beat up on them yeah <laughs> i need to get my own back uh, yeah that would that would have been actually great yeah <laughs> that actually would have yeah. make make sense but i guess you've got to be a little bit more secretive you're good at this game, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. You've probably seen Marty play this game. <laughs> I think you played two hours of that first mission where he just ran. Well, do you, do you follow uh, Rabbit VIP? Together! Uh, sorry, who? Now. Rabbit VIP. It's her, uh, it's her handle. Do you follow Rabbit, Rabbit VIP? No, no, I don't know that one. No. Okay. So, Rabbit VIP is actually Nicole Sandoval, uh, one of the producers for, um, for Mafia. And oh, so, wow. so um, I was I was watching it for about ten minutes, and I watched her play the game, <laughs> and she and she was embarrassed. She was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I'm just watching you play this," because she's actually not very good at it. <laughs> yeah, but that's the whole thing. Yeah, she was the yeah. not the the game designer, but yeah. Yeah. Thank you, but James. She's like, you know, I mean, she was basically like. Um, our, our, our second director. So we had Dara, our uh, main director, Dara. Dara Fuck Dara. you, Sam. He's an Irishman who's been living in America for years and years and years, and he's worked on everything from Star Wars to yeah, lots of stuff. But I think Star Wars is his main baby. But um, but it's great opportunity to work with him. Thank and you, uh, Nicole was sort of uh, second team when it came to directing the performances. Um, so she was one of our performance directors, and um, and yesterday she was telling me that yesterday she parked in the first in the first um, little mission she parked the car in and people are gonna love hearing say park the car P say park the pa car pa park park the car yeah park the car in the garage <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, no but she she parallel parked and she got stuck she got stuck between two two posts but she couldn't get out so she just had to turn off turn off. No! Wait, wait, so she did it, so she, then she just decided I'm not gonna play the game anymore to show how bad I was at it. Yeah, I don't know, oh no, 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 I mean she came back on today, but yesterday she got stuck between two posts, didn't know how to get out of it, so she just turned the whole game oh, off. Oh, that's actually <laughs> hilarious. That poor girl, she just wants to show off the game. This is what I worked on, I'm really proud of it, and there's like, okay, I'm off now, I'm stuck. Yeah, exactly. I think this Ooh, part of the mission, I, I died so many times. Was oh, us that's oh it's saying. from this one guy. He gets me right around the corner. You're being more cautious than this one. Damn that guy. Um, so, has he done a lot of voice work before? Uh, I've done a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I ever did for voice work was actually a commercial here in Australia, in Melbourne. Uh, which was... Uh, Gee, man, that was 2008 or nine, maybe? I think it was eight. And what was nine. that for? Uh, it was for Rotary. Rotary? So it was more of a charity thing, yeah. You know Rotary? I know that name. Kind of, I don't know why I know that name. Yeah, Rotary is kind of a, uh, a group of people that get together um, to provide... Um, services for the community, so you might want a nice part. So Rotary will get together and they'll have volunteers and they'll, they'll build some nice things in the park to make it. And that was, uh, when was that? For the 2000s? Yeah, that was 2008, I think. You think how scary that uh, is? And then, that's, that was... 
really a long time ago now. When you think about it, I remember the 2000s, and I was like, yeah, when I went to, you know, year 1999, you know, I was in Melbourne City, you know, drinking up a storm, going, oh my god, we're in year 2000 now, you know, and I think, wow, that was 20 years ago. I know, it's crazy. And then 2008 was the last time we had a financial crisis, so... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Another one. It's like, wow, you know there's been a lot of time if we're in another bloody financial crisis. They usually happen every 10 to 15 years, don't they? Yeah, that's, um, well, that's average now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they seem to be averaging these days. But, um, yeah, so, uh... Now, I had a little sneaky look at your IMDB. Oh, I did, I did three as well. You asked me what else, what other voiceover stuff I did. There was an anime, a Japanese anime. It was, um, they needed an Aussie voice for an Aussie dad. Um, because the kid comes to visit Australia, and so... Yeah, so I was like... What? You were in an anime? Yeah, I was in an anime. I was doing voiceover for an anime. But other than that, I haven't really so I did a, I did a Netflix thing. Worse, uh, thank you! I don't think I've ever known an Aussie to be in an anime. I know! It's weird, eh? It's just not like, really? Like... Yeah, and the, and the fact that they're casted out of LA. It's like, I mean, there's so many Aussies in LA that they know they can do that. It's like, ah, oh, we'll, we'll get a good Aussie actor in LA. Where they all sort of come to find more work because there's but not the a place in The thing about drug money is now it pays for a lot of muscle. Yeah. Can you shout out words for me, please? Down, boys. And that, that's that's probably what you get a lot of too over there. Is there a lot of Aussie competition? Uh, Aussie competition in LA? Yeah. 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 Marty and I have actually come up against each other for things. Well, you can't really say come up against like we're enemies or anything, but, yeah, but we've yeah. been up for the same. Yeah, we've been up for the same parts. So, so, yeah. so did Marty yeah, tell you how we met each other? Sometimes he's with you, sometimes I haven't. No, how did you guys know him? Well, I, uh, I was his video store clerk. 16 oh, years ago. Wow, what? It wasn't a Yeomans or something, was it? That was Video Easy. Video Easy? Yeah. <laughs> I went to Video Easy and I used to get rid of his late fees. <laughs> and because I've done it as, as much as I don't know my chat really knows uh, but I did acting myself uh, when I was younger and stuff like that too and Ma Marty and I would talk about the several roles that we do you know I've I've done my dash I've done my neighbors and blue healers and uh, it's, uh, it's funny you say that because I'm going on set tomorrow for neighbors <laughs> are you yeah I couldn't make home in a way because I didn't it's have a 12 pack Oh, you need a 12 pack. You need oh, a 12 pack for home and away, so sorry about that. Yo, oh, thank you for the sub, no. Worse, thank you so much. Um, so, uh, we met through there, and then uh, we didn't <laughs> see each other for a while. And I was, I'm doing games a lot for Ubisoft, and they like to invite me to events. And lo and behold, Marty does an event for um, Rainbow Six Siege. And and I, I didn't remember who he was, and I'm trying to remember him. And I walked up to him and he said to me, he goes, oh, and he yelled out my real name. And I went, oh, so we do know each other. He goes, yeah, video easy. I went, oh, crap. How do we remember each other from that? So. Crazy. It, that's how we ended up meeting. And that's how, obviously, this got into the this whole thing of streaming himself and stuff like that. So, and then we knew yourself. I thought, great, I love this game. So I'm so glad you um, came on board to, to come and promote it. So I think that's great. I'll see you're never gonna forget a guy who saved you from the cash. Dude, when you did that thing, I lost my mind. What thing? He, when you did that, that video for me? Oh, no. Dude, I lost my mind. I, I did that and I That's said, so holy shit. He's just like, I've got a present for you, mate. And I said, you did not get that. He's like, yep, yep. And I got her like, I, on, on stream, I said, I'm tweeting this out now. I'm tweeting it out now. <laughs> it's the least you could have done. Yeah, and, and that's great. Thank you for that too. So no worries, man. No, so being fun. from yourself, uh, you've done a fair bit of uh, stuff in the in the states as well. So have you have, uh, have you got anything you can talk about that you might be having coming up soon? Uh, coming up soon. Let me think. Nobody's carrying it I mean, to the doctor this time. See you know, the, the industry in in. Well, worldwide, really, has been done. closed down since about She's never gonna March. Never going to for you. So, uh, you let me live? Um, I did Narcos on uh, uh, Netflix, um, and they flew me to, to Mexico City to shoot that, which Frank. was an amazing experience. 
Um, but I think, I mean, look, more recently, I've been in Australia gone. since March. Um, I did Wentworth. Uh, what happened about, to him? What was that? Six six weeks ago, I think. The um, Ameri- did, just did, is just the last American Wentworth? Is that what? No, it's Australian. It's based on Wentworth Prison. So, um, That's yeah, right. Shooting, started bashing shooting a dog track. Down at Williamstown. Oh, Williamstown. Friend of the family. It's beautiful. I've, yeah, I've yeah. shot down there it's myself so with uh, Blue Healers. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. I shot out a yeah. crow. Actually, beautiful yeah. area. Yeah. And did you do family. Rush as well? No, no, I wasn't around for Rush. No, actually, I just missed out on a roll, and this is going to put you back. I missed out on, I just missed out on a roll. They were going to get me in, but they end up cancelling the show for good guys, bad guys. Yeah. Do you remember that one? Ah, uh, good guys, bad guys. Oh, yeah. Is yeah, that, that was really. Um, who was the lead with? I forget his that? name now, but he was really was well known. Voice in the back of your head. Yeah, didn't he? He had like those. Maybe uh, sounds those, like. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Sarah. Geez, man, these names on the tip of my tongue. I can't even remember them. I was telling you not to pull that oh, trigger. Geez, that's a long time ago. What was that? Twenty years. Marcus ago? Graham. You can't make up your mind. Good news. Oh, was it Marcus Graham? Graham? Marcus yeah. Graham. I mean, I haven't really seen much of him. <laughs> we sure had some laughs, yeah, right? Yeah, Marcus Graham. Yeah, yeah. Done a lot of theater actually. Remember so that Marcus time? Marcus Graham went over to LA as well. Me. Yeah. And you apparently hated it. Oh, he went to Australia. I saw him when he came back. I saw him in a Melbourne Theater Company play. Um, and he was bloody great it was called uh, The Blue Room which I think Nicole Kidman had something to do with that at one point I think she might have done done it on Broadway but anyway um, so he, uh, um, he from what I've heard he's done more theatre since he got back from LA so unless you're uh, into theatre you might not have I probably haven't seen a lot of it no. kept up. not yeah. recently at least yeah yeah, yeah. But that's actually but, uh, fantastic we have all this entertainment stuff yeah. So would you would you do more of this uh, work in the future? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, man. It, it was an amazing experience. Actually, these these you scenes with now. Detective Norman, Damien Clark is the guy who plays Detective box, Norman. Stare down so great to work with, man. And you can Alfie, really see Benny, how seasoned he was maybe with video fire, game, I, um, you know, performance capture because there's just these little nuances do he does. Like done. when he first sits down and he rubs his eye to get my family no identity. He's just great, man. Like he was really great to work with. And just to watch the final product and see what he was doing you're like geez man you know your stuff he's, he's really definitely cool. he's selling your time and yeah like, i gotta get out of and he was just so calm. relaxed and cool calm and collected and he's like oh yeah what are you gonna i'm I not gonna do anything to you tommy you gotta wife do it for me whatever you know like all this boys. stuff it's great and yeah. you know he's obviously not irish he's american so i thought he did a great job with the accent yeah he's um well he you would have more scenes with him wouldn't you like we're one-on-one oh, there's stuff. twins you know what's interesting? I was actually yeah. there were only about three or four scenes in the whole game where I'm not actually present. <clears throat> present. So you know I understand um, what you're going through. The thing is that most of All the scenes where I'm over them, the there with the Celieri family, fear that one of them's going to go whatever. before you. Do. Everyone else has stuff to say. I didn't really have this a lot case, to say. But when I get to talk to, be one of the to uh, Detective Norman, that's when it all starts it. spilling out. And so I remember Drag the guy at the end of the show, they're like, man, you have the lead role, long, you've got nothing to say. And I'm like, now. dude, have you seen the pages? You asked for the full script. Eat, right? <laughs> like, yeah, and then, yeah. Even dirty cats. And then uh, when they've finally seen the, the final product here. that goes for, I think, and just the cutscenes go for like three hours. I was in 45 down to you or me taking a and they're like, oh, wow, my wife a widow. Had a lot. <laughs> Keeping you alive in exactly yeah, man, the moral course. Right oh, there. I was going to say, you would have I'll so try. much dialogue, it's incredible. That's a pretty yeah, good was, sales, yeah, it was good. It was great, man. It felt like we were Trying shooting a movie. Think you and when they said, in. I mean, when they gave us, by the end of it, I had but this is your whole career uh, right here. 200 pages. It was like 100 and close to 187, 190 or something. And so it was almost like shooting a two crack films, or one like Lord of the Rings type of movies because it was that many pages. And so it, you, I mean, you know, Lord of the Rings goes for three hours and the cutscenes for this go for over three hours. So. Well, at least like you said before, you didn't have to learn yeah. your lines. You just looked at the pages on the day. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I definitely <laughs> learned my lines. So long so long you know, you my head was going to explode. Loads of lines on this one. Yeah, my um, I remember the director Dara actually came up to me um, and he goes, "What do you? What's your style for learning lines?" And I said, "Well, (laughs) they were putting me up in this hotel with this beautiful jacuzzi." (laughs) So what I do? (laughs) I like the I like the start of this already. So I was in a hotel in a a beautiful jacuzzi. (laughs) Beautiful jacuzzi by myself. 
Yeah. Um, and just, just, well, it was my best friend, Mr. Redwine. Long time. So it was ago. a bottle of bottle of red wine and me and a script. Another way. And I'd learn it over and over to the point Someone where I'd be once told me really be passing out because it's so damn hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were complete like, oh, prone <laughs> at the end. His greatest yeah. weakness. Um. Oh, oh, this scene, man. This is really Maybe interesting. Right. The wedding scene. Or Absolutely a beautiful because, scene. Because. Yeah, that very Everything last line of the whole game is actually the last line of this wedding speech. Both good and bad. I didn't pick that up. I've yeah, I family. didn't know they were going to do it either. They, it wasn't written in the script like that. It was something they did as an back when they cut it away together. My friends. So, um, I really loved it. When I found out, like, the first I've time I watched this... a lot this, of hard promises. Went, oh, wait. No, that was the last line of the wedding speech. But we've already gone past the wedding years. speech and to the front yard of his house with, with the, the hose. And trying to find myself. Now they're introducing the last line of wedding speech. So yeah, I could come cool. home. This is a cool better husband. To do. It's a better father. Even then, oh, man. that you're doing there, you can even hear that it's a bit more worldly, a bit more now that I'm older, older. Do you know what I mean? Oh, uh, good. I was, just a there's a sense I was of, hoping I was pulling that off. <laughs> yeah, there's a sense of calm about it. Instead of like the, yeah. hey, hey, what you doing? He's like, you know, our greatest weakness. Is, you know, he's calming yeah. down a bit now. But it's now, also our greatest you know. strength. Yeah, he's, um, he's got some words of wisdom to pass on to the younger generation. He gets us out of bed in the morning. And then here it comes, folks. Here it comes. Well, let's just chase our dreams. Even when they're moving too Actually, in this batch, when I saw the car, and I saw that car, I said, no, don't do it. Like, from I know it's going to lead into number two, but oh, we're too tired I was to like, take another step. I already knew this character. I said, there, there he is. Mr. Angelo. <laughs> you were like, just let him die of old age, you bastards. <laughs> and that's a thing. That's a thing about this life. This is how you end, you know? Yes. Mr. Salieri sends his attention regards. Attention to detail. I mean, even something as small as look at Tommy's neck there, and you can see where he stops shaving. <laughs> Have you ever heard that joke about... Um, why do Italians wear uh, Why do Italians wear necklaces? <laughs> why? So they know where to stop shaving. <laughs> That's a, that is true. The horoscope story is just embedded in there. Yeah. <laughs> so they know where to stop shaving. That money. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're pretty swarthy. And see, that's even then. This I think part, I'm this part. Remember, remember we'll the money go. jobs. Even best pals will come on gold. But family, family is forever. Family that's the last forever. line of the way. Speech. Oh, and I'll tell you some other insight. You want some other insight? Yeah, go for it. I don't, I don't think it's leaked yet. Okay, when we're all sitting at the t table for the wedding speech, yeah. when we shot that, I was sitting, the only people we had there that I could use as people for around the table yeah. was was Jeremy Luke, who plays Paulie. <laughs> there, was, there was Don DePetta, who plays Sam, and there was Glenn Toronto, who plays Don Celieri. So I'm basically talking to the guys I've just ratted out about how I'm so proud of my daughter and she's getting married. And so you're looking at all these gangsters, you're going, oh, you look so beautiful, honey, in your wedding dress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, I still had, a, I still had, a, they brought in a daughter for me and then obviously um, Bella, Papa, um, Sarah, who plays Sarah, she was there as well. But it was just so weird because like, you guys are dead. Get out of the scene. What are you doing? <laughs> it's so strange. And, and that's the thing, too, is even that little snippet of story that he did, what I'm really interested in is is that, yeah, he went to prison. He went for eight years, right? He went a little nuts. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how the hell he survived for eight years. If you're someone in the mafia who has ratted out those people, how do you survive that? Yeah, you'd want uh, you'd probably want your own private little spot, I'd you, imagine. Yeah, you're a, you're a rat, you know. And that's what that's what I'm thinking. What would be really interesting is when it gets to that point of him uh, going to prison, uh, people trying to go after him because of what they've done, or what they, or what he's done to them, and the families that want revenge on him, and you know, like inside prison, or you know, something of what you had to do to survive inside a prison, and. You know, and, t and then he got out. I mean, what did he do when he got out? Because that's a long gap for when he said, hey, I've gotten out of prison for, you know, after eight years. And now he's an old man putting his water, daughter down the uh, down the aisle. You know, and I'm thinking, 
I reckon there's a lot that's happened during that and it's just not spoken about, you know? Hey, I reckon we should write a movie about it. What do you reckon? Dude, I reckon 100%. There needs to be <laughs> something of saying, of filling the gap. Because it's kind of like, anyway, and then, you know, yeah, like, as the great Seinfeld would say, you know, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, he's an old man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. And whatever, so whatever, whatever. I'd, I'd love movie. to see more of that. And I really do hope that... Uh, uh, 2k does that and or they think of that and they think you know what let's expand on this a little bit more because he is a beloved character you know he's he's come from the slums he's 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 building himself up and you know eventually being some kind of don like character you know i mean it's yeah, hard to be sure. a don when you've ratted out all the guys or you've they've shot up or died or whatever but um yeah i'd love to see more of that you know and at number two they go into more depth and i love how in number two uh have you played but any of number two uh no no that's that's got to be my next uh my next mission well they they develop it in a way that it's you've got to build up your um uh your 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 mafia essentially you know taking over restaurants you know muscling them up and all that kind of stuff so you've got to go hey give me the money basically you know give us protection money or we're gonna burn your place down to the ground you know uh it it sounds like a mafia yeah, be a version it, of Monopoly. Well, it's basically like just imagine a GTA finally had an infusion with Mafia, <laughs> and then it's right. just like you've got to take over and you've got to build your empire to a point where you know you have your own sort of place and you know it, it's absolutely phenomenal. But that that's where they led it to, and um, super cool. Yeah, and then you've got and then you've got number three, which is very much like GTA. That uh, I love the game. It kind of lost it a little bit because it kind of stretched you out too much. It said, "Hey, there's something important. Go down here." You go, "Yeah, all right, but maybe I'll just spend, you know, three hours doing side missions. Like, <laughs> it's not really that important, you know." Um, it. You know what I find really interesting about all that is that because number three ends up in doesn't it end up in like Florida or somewhere in the deep south. Yeah, with alligators and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's something that I, growing up and seeing all these gangster films and thinking, thinking about prohibition, it always you always sort of think of Chicago, New York, that kind of thing, yep. and you don't really think about what was going on in the South. But of course, all that rum was coming across from Cuba. So for, you get the yep. whiskey from Canada, you get the rum from Cuba, and um, I actually did a, a, a feature film uh, with Ben Affleck called Live by Night, and the part that I played in that was um, was very much like I, I was great it was great to be able to do Tommy because the part that I had in that film was almost nothing um, yep. but um, his, his name was Fasani and I sort of had created this character but didn't really get much of a chance to show it even though I was on set for five weeks and I think I'm in the movie for five seconds but oh, um, that, that yeah, such a shame. <laughs> kind of yeah. Like, you're, you're on that floor question. you're on that floor yeah. right now yeah uh, exactly and we got to they got he got us to do improvised things and all sorts of stuff and none of it made it to the final yeah. edit it was all on that floor like you said um the, the chopping room floor but um but we, we ended up down in the south and actually um we were flown to Georgia and we got to shoot on uh, Ben Affleck's property because he has his own island um, just off the coast of Georgia there. Of course. Which is he sort does. of connected to the, land, the main. Of course he does. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's well, kind what, of... you don't have your own island? Come on, man. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> no, um, so, but it's, it's accessible by road, so it's connected by a bridge. So it's not like way off the shore, it's just right there by the, by the, um, the coast. And uh, anyway, we ended up on his on his property, and they built this whole set where it was supposed to be like a casino. And I'm like, oh man, you know you you've hit the big time when you walk onto a set like that. Every time I walked onto a set um, in a different location for that movie, I felt like I stepped back in time to to Lost Heaven, and that yeah. was what was great. No, it, it, this, this, that's uh, that's game. absolutely I got to awesome. Be able to yeah, take that character and sort of elaborate and then really do it fully. So it's great. So what was it like seeing you in there? Like this is <laughs> like if I take if I take this hammer out of, of this car right now and you look at him, you're going, well, that's you. That's spot on. Well, you. it's really it's really interesting how you perceive yourself because yeah, there's certain points. Like yeah, I can see myself in that in that angle there. Yeah, okay. But um. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, now I see it. He says, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes sometimes I see it and I go, wait, that doesn't look like me. And then other people that I know me that know me go, yeah, that looks exactly like you. And I'm like, really? Oh, jeez, I never thought I looked like that. 
<laughs> oh, you think yeah, I'm I'm way him. more handsome than that guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he, he's a badass. Um, <laughs> yeah. no, I, I've got other friends that, that contact me. They go, yeah, it's so spooky to see you in a machine like this. It's really weird. <laughs> the ghost of the machine. Yeah, hundred percent. That's the thing. You're doing these mocap suits, and then you look at it and go, no, that was your mannerisms. I mean, I mean, even to the simple fact, I don't know if they got you to do this, but if I if I make him stand still, and I've noticed that. He kind of just has a slight movement yeah. and a quite bre a breathing, you know, like a yeah. And the arms are going that's, out a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly how. I, yeah, that's. And that's that's what I you did as see, well. I can see my yeah. I can see the way that I stand in the way he stands for sure. Yeah, I, that's fantastic, and I and I like to hear that the game t kept it true, saying you know what, we're trusting in your ability to to do that character, and that's it. Just live and breathe it, you know. But there's also when you th when you think about the uh, mocap suit, there's also a certain way like it almost dictates how you stand because it's it can be kind of restricting at times, especially around the middle. So because you've got this right. kind of uh, you've got this belt around the middle of you, which holds the batteries and all, all that kind of the oh, responders yeah, of and all that stuff, all the tech and um, and so that can be yeah quite sort of uh, restricting for the movement and so when i when i watch the way tommy moves i can sort of see oh yeah that's me trying to move with a belt around my waist <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's like why do you look so uncomfortable why do you keep touching your stomach you know <laughs> Just, yeah. yeah he's like he's wearing a, bat, a batman belt or something <laughs> so how long was this process like how long did you do it from like start to finish Ah, well, um, the performance capture stuff, so the face, voice, and body, the full stuff took about, what was it, um, we did November 18, and then we did January, February, and a bit of March 19, so it must have been three and a half months. Jeez, that's um, in the, bad, yeah. Yeah, in the middle of that, we, we were flown to Czech Republic as well, which was cool, and we got to do some voiceover there as well as as uh, some of the facial capture stuff but um to the czech and republic after... yeah well because the original game was made in the czech republic this game is huge in the czech republic yeah wow the, the czechs yeah the czechs the russians the belarusians they all love this game man this is eastern europe just absolutely dig this game gee so they so you could go down there now actually... and just wear the suit and they're gonna go wait a minute <laughs> Well, they actually, um, they used, for the translation into their language, they used the original Tommy that, that spoke it in Czech. <clears throat> Wait, so, the um, original guy that did it? From the original Mafia, yeah. Oh my god. And I know that when, I first, when they first started announcing this game, I started uh, reading some comments about... Why? Why did you um? You know, why didn't you use the original? And I know Hayden was asked a lot of questions like, why didn't you just use the original guy? Yeah. Um, and because I know he did a wonderful job, and he's obviously a big part of the reason why people love this game. Um, but Hayden was like, he's just, you know, Tommy's supposed to be around thirty-ish, and it's just a bit, a bit. He sounded a bit maybe too much like old Tommy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I was talking to some Czech fans who were saying um that they it's they kind of they love well they said that they love my voice but they said it's really great that they got his voice but they said that the reason they like my voice is because i sound like the younger tommy and i'm sort of more believable with the younger tommy but they like his voice because when it's the older tommy he sounds like the right age but he doesn't sound the right age for the younger tommy so it's kind of and and considering yeah. that most of most of the timeline is when tommy's a bit younger um i think they just sort of they appreciated that that for the English version, they used my voice, so. and that's just that, that shows like a it. solid fandom for the games as well. Uh, exactly, they're willing to go. No, 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 we understand it. We just, we just want you to do it right. Yeah, yeah, and I was, I was pretty nervous about that. I'm like, oh, jeez, I know this has got a cult following. I hope, I hope people are kind. <laughs> yeah, which is quite surprising when you think of a game that didn't doesn't offer you much more than just the actual story. But I think that the the problem with a lot of games these days is the you just don't some of them you don't care about the protagonist you don't care what happens to him that just relates the whole game you know and, yeah. and they set the scene by making it cinematic and going okay sit back and enjoy it and then hey by the way you're going to be part of this mafia film you know and it's just, yeah it's like wow i'm invested you know yeah that's what that's, that's the thing that i was surprised about because like i said um 
when I thought it was a feature film, then I found out it was a video game. I didn't really know what that meant. But once I started working on it, I'm like, wow, this is this is really like a feature film where the player gets to just be a part of it and move to the next scene by progressing through the missions, you know? And it's awesome. It's great. It's a great idea. Oh, a hundred percent, you know. And I, I, look, I, I have said the same thing to, to Marty as much as he likes to do his writing and directing and stuff. I said, do you know like those... Uh, I play a lot of... I like story-based games, right? So this is why this is right in my alley. But uh, right. they actually do a lot of games of with full motion video. Have you seen those before? Wait, what? Like real... So real, real acting, real like movie stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I, going... It's like choose your own adventure. But you choose your own adventure. So you choose, hey, where do you want to go from here? Would you like to go this? Or would you like to say this to this person? And then something reacts and it continues the story. You get like seven or eight different endings, you know, depending on your actions. So yes, I have heard about that. Because a couple of the guys, including Dara, were talking about that when um, I think it was Netflix released something where you could almost, it was interactive where you could choose your own. I don't even know what that was. Do you know what that yeah, was? Yeah, it was like it was like a, where you want the series to go. But right. imagine in a game like we, I play a lot of PC games that do that. Uh, there's a very old series called the Tex, uh, Tex Murphy Adventures. It's like uh, uh, Under a Killing Moon, Overseer, um, uh, the Pandora Directive, and it was just like it was 3D environment. You got to move around, and then it would trigger a yeah. cutscene, and it would trigger and then trigger another one, trigger another. That was the first one to do full motion video. So, but with wow. games now, there's this amazing one uh, that they have. I think we play called, um, is it the bunker or is it? That is one of them, but I forget what the the complex. And it was really great how there was a real pandemic thing going on, and people had to figure out how to do it. And there was bad people that were after you. What do you choose, or who do you choose to die? Do you choose that guy to go out there and attack them and, and die eventually, or? Do you want someone to stay behind to do this? And it really just got you so developed. And I think that's a lot of the future of gaming. But I've told I've told Buddy, I think that's what he should do, is make a game where it's a choose your own adventure. You know, whether, it, hey, be about uh. a person streaming, you know, and someone's come to the house, and then how do you get away from it? <laughs> While still trying to win the game. <laughs> yeah, well, so it could be anything of just like, uh, you know, someone tracks someone down and... You know they've come to the house and then basically it's your way of trying to get out of the house you know without being murdered by them or something you know so yeah you know, but yeah, i think it's wow. a, a cool game that you can do that's you know all you got to do is have a, a linear storyline and then you can break off from it you know and that's what i'd like to see from video games too is that actors can really get into you don't have to worry about mocap suits you can literally do a movie but several different endings yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, well, see, that was the thing, like, coming into into video games and sort of seeing their world and hearing the guys who've been creating these games for years and years and years. And then they, they talk about, oh, Netflix has just done Choose Your Own Adventure. We've been doing that for decades. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, 100%. <laughs> like, catch up, Netflix. <laughs> 100, 100%. And that's, and that's the thing with, um, uh, with, I mean, they've become more and more popular as the years have gone on. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know this will never go away. They're, they're just getting this even closer to that with having mocap suits. But uh, yeah, I'd love to see a lot more of that. So um, yep. I think getting in the That'd video be... game world is a bit different. You know, what I mean, as Marty's figured out that you know something oh, is a, a voice he done years ago, and next minute we go, oh my god, I've heard your voice for hours. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, that's the other strange thing. It's like, oh man, I haven't even. Like, people were asking me, I'm like, geez, I'm going to have to brush up on what we did for that, because I can't really remember. It was a year, it was over, a, it was like a year and a half ago. <laughs> Is that how long ago it was since you'd done it? Well, we finished, uh, we finished everything, the main, like, principal photography in March last year. So, what's that, March, April, May, June, July, August. Yeah, it's, it's 18, 18 months ago. Geez, actually, that didn't take them too long. I mean, they would have had a lot of stuff built for it already. Yeah, I mean, they were building as they were going, of course, but, um, yeah, and, uh, but, uh, just, yeah, man, it was so great to be part of that world. What, what's, have you got a favourite? Um, have you got a favourite, I mean, this isn't a, this isn't a trick question, you don't have to say much. Oh, have you oh, got no, a favourite, no. uh, story-driven, story-driven game? Uh, in this kind of genre, obviously, Grand Theft Auto is going to take the cake, uh, every single oh, of time. of course. Uh, yeah. but for myself, I love this era, um, 
So a lot of this, that's why Mafia has a lot, my, a lot more in my heart. I love this and the PI genre and, you know, like the, the fedora hats and stuff. There's something so classy about it that I like. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, that's like, hey, put on a tracksuit and go and, you know, smack the prostitute over there or something. You know what I mean? It's, it's <laughs> yeah, this guy's junkie. about, it's Beat about, up the junkie. yeah, it's, it's love, it's honor, it's respect. You know what I mean? And, and that's what you feel if you go up in the world, it's, you get respect, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's the other that's the other thing like I think with with Grand Theft Auto and those kind of games it's like every, everyone on the street is kind of threatened <laughs> whereas yeah. whereas with Mafia it's like if you're not part of our business you've got no you've got yeah, worries you, like, we're not you can have a guy off the street that comes and yeah. wallops you too you know it's like <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not afraid of you either buddy you know you got, a, you got police on your ass there mate <laughs> yeah I mean, that was actually one of the good scenes I found in this game, too, was when the big uh, uh, mob boss, and he's just beaten up on a guy, and these two police officers are literally uh, on the edge of the street, they and they away. go, uh, 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 look away, look away, look away, look away. We don't want to be yeah. part of this. Move on, you know? They were like, oh, did we forget something back there? I think we have to go back there. <laughs> and you think these guys ruled, ruled the cities, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the great thing about and guaranteed, people like uh, Thomas, who's um, who was uh, the the uh, an animation director for it, uh, the gaming director, video, video videographer. I don't even can't even remember his, his full title. But anyway, he was the guy who worked on the original Mafia. He worked with us on this, and wow. I, we have a lot to thank for him as well because he brought a lot of stuff that was like, no, we have to do it like this or the fans are going to hate it. <laughs> and because he was a huge fan, he's a huge fan too. And, and because he, he worked on the original, he knew what worked and what didn't, what needed to be sort of polished and what needed to stay, what we needed to recreate and what we could do new. And, yeah. um, and I mean, man, working with him was unbelievable because the guy's brain is one of the most creative brains. He just has a way of seeing things in his head and going, try it like this. And you do it and you'd be like, Oh man, that was just that was perfect. How did you know to do that? That was amazing. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's and, the thing too. Sticking with those fans, you've got to have the fans like what you're doing. Because if yeah. this game could have been ripped right into and said, "What did you do? What did you do to our beloved yeah. game?" I know, I know. Lucky I wasn't directing you, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it's a new, if it's a new game, like you know, Mafia Four comes out and it's something else, you sort of you forgive it because it's a story and you just go with what they say. But as soon as you recreate something, you have a yeah, you've got to respect it. You've got to respect it as much as you can and say no, no. If you if you scrutinising it, imagine what someone else is going to say about it. Yeah, you know, exactly. and you get one person going, going. Oh, I can't believe they did this. How they, you doing? they didn't do this or they changed this too much and it became a different game well then you've lost them but i think yeah. they kept so true to the original it's like it's like they've sharpened it up and, and stuff like that. well originally i actually thought that the original voice actor did do the game until i went oh. hang on a second and i had a look and i said that it doesn't sound like him you know it doesn't, <laughs> and i looked into it and i said no no this is a totally different person yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, a and, and a big hats off to you because you really <laughs> sold it you you brought it into this decade and said, you know what, this is my own take on it. And, and it gave a lot of respect. So, you know, thank, big thank you to you, you know. Thanks, man. Uh, these Thanks, games mean man. a lot to people as much as it, sometimes you look at it and go, ah, it's a job, it's a job. You and you can forget about it after 18 months, you know. Like, and then you think of it going, no, no, you made something that people just said, you know what, you've, it came out at the right time for people to, uh, they needed a distraction. Yeah, sure. No, very well said. Yeah. That was a huge honour to, and and it's go, it's a huge huge honour to have been able, able to be a part of this, and it's going to stay with me forever. The memory of working on this was really quite something else, and I grew up loving gangster stuff, you know. So, oh, and to play one, yeah, even if it so wasn't a I've, suit that was quite constricted on the old, on the old fella, uh, you know, <laughs> he, he was he, he, in its heart, it still you still was a gangster in a mocap suit. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would have been nice if I could have worn this beautiful white suit, but uh, yeah, dandy white suit. <laughs> or, or, or even, or even just wear the mocap thing and just go. Can you just put a fedora on my head? Is that a thing? <laughs> Is that? Um, did you have those mocap suits where it had the camera pointed at your face as well? Absolutely. Yeah, Far yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I remember you, seeing you something on, my... on your social media. Yeah, Instagram. I think I put something on Instagram of. Um... Oh, it might have been a story actually. I think I did like a before and after shot. But, yeah. Um, yeah, that that took a lot of getting used to, man. To have that camera, 
you know, literally, what, uh, I don't know, 30 centimeters from your face is like really in your face and trying to connect with your scene partner while you've got this thing right in your field of vision took some getting used to but it was a great acting uh, exercise and it taught me a lot and now when i get on set for normal television and film it's it's just so freeing because i'm like oh i don't have a camera 30 centimeters from my is it straight up in your face yeah, yeah. well i've just got yeah. your um instagram up at the moment so guys make yeah. sure do follow him on instagram as well but um hi everybody by the way yeah, hi. The, yeah, this is him. Um, How are you doing? You, you like this Dilk of Flooks? Yeah, like yeah, the, the when he did that, I also went, How's he yeah, Australian? He dusted out as soon as we bumped off Morello's hatchet, man. Yeah, we go Dilk of Flooks. You know, we're Dilk. It's <laughs> like, um, um, I got something stuck in my mouth. I gotta spit it out, you know? <laughs> you gotta get rid of that thing. I've been trying to get rid of it my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> 